I'm Lise Colucci, and I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com, where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. This is a short video about um, emotional detachment from a narcissist when you are trauma bonded. So basically how to break the ties emotionally with a narcissist. If that sounds good, hit the subscribe button and we'll get started. All right, so we know what trauma bonds are. We can do another video on that another time. But when we are with someone who is a narcissist and we are trauma bonded, it is very difficult to let go and to move on and to stop thinking about them and to basically have our own lives, right? It's very difficult to, to, to feel like that relationship is actually over, to not hold on to the attachments that we have with the narcissistic person. So people always say they know what's going on. They're full of cognitive dissonance because they know they don't want the person, but they can't stop thinking about them. They want the relationship back. They want, um, they want the person to be different than they are and for things to get better, things like that. So in order to let go of a toxic person, first of all, when you're in any relationship with anyone, seeing that person for who they are and for how they are and for accepting them, accepting them as they are is kind of critical in order to have a, a true, honest, healthy relationship with someone. And because the narcissist's world is one of delusion and lies, we are taught that we are um, basically with someone that we don't actually see until the mask falls off, until it slips, until the devaluing starts, and then we start to see the truth of the situation. So a lot of times what we're hanging on to is the illusion of what we thought we had, right? And that's the part that's hard to let go of. So let's talk about real quickly here, this is a short video, <laughs> about ways to detach from the narcissistic person emotionally in order to help to break the trauma bonds. Okay, so number one is going no contact. Going no contact or very low contact if you cannot go no contact. And when you are low contact, remembering to gray rock as much as possible and to keep things on a business-like terms with as few um, emotional exchanges as you possibly can. But no contact is important because it gives you a chance to have space, number one, to, have, to not be constantly dealing with the abuse and the manipulation, and it helps to not re-engage the feelings of attachment that you have to the narcissistic person because trauma bonds are, um, they are stronger when you are in contact with the person because of the nature of how they work. So because of the um, chemicals released in your body, because of the, the emotions, trying to, the, another idea is to try to see a bigger picture and understand the abuse. So that is where the understanding comes in where you see exactly what the toxic person is doing, the types of manipulation that they're having, being able to name to yourself the, what you're experiencing and what's being done. So if you see them projecting, then you can inside your own mind say that's projecting. Um, if you're thinking about a situation that happened, you can then recognize that was gaslighting. So recognizing it and seeing it as a bigger picture that they do this across the board, that they're doing this all the time in some way or form to you or to other people. All right. Try to see it as an outsider and change your perspective to the outsiders. And what I mean by that is try to look at other survivors and try to see your situation as similar to their situation. Try to see it the way you would have empathy for someone else who's going through this. Try to see yourself as that survivor and um, try to see if you can gain some perspective about what that person might need to do or how they can get through it. Sometimes it's easier to see when, you, when you're in the outsider's seat, so to speak, and you're looking in, right? Okay, um, another idea is to try to understand why you are attached and what it was that you're needing from that relationship or what you thought you were needing or what vulnerability that narcissist played on in order to hook you and get you believing that they were the one to fulfill that need and start to work on things to give yourself what you need. 
find ways to take care of yourself, to nurture yourself. So basically self-care on that level. Okay, talk to survivors. And one way is in, in groups like the Spanily groups that we have and peer support groups that are free and available. Another idea is group coaching um, where you have an opportunity to be with other survivors and get the peer support as well as have some coaching support at the same time. So things like that can help you to gain perspective and to be accountable to your own choice in this to let go. All right. Um, next, allow your emotions and stop feeding the ones with the limiting beliefs. So a lot of times we're saying, I just want to get over this really, really fast. I just want this done. How come this has to take so long? I don't want to feel this anymore. When it's truly only been, you know, less than a month or something, it's a short amount of time or, or it's been a while, but we haven't actually let ourselves feel what we need to feel. So feeling what you need to feel is important, but then stop feeding into the limiting beliefs that come from that. So what I mean by that is perhaps you feel really bad and you're feeling really negative and you're feeling really sad and then you start getting hard on yourself about it. Well, a negative, and then a limiting belief has just slipped in and what that's doing is tying you back to the trauma and not allowing you to let go and move forward. Staying away from the narcissist's friends or family or relations as much as you possibly can. We do lose people in this and sometimes the narcissist can have friends that you know you, you like or, or groups of friends that you enjoy being around. It's staying away from that. Sometimes people have had to let go of things like social groups and um, other, other things like that in order to have sort of like fresh air, you know, instead of being re-immersed in things that completely not only remind you of the narcissistic person, but they are um, potentially full of flying monkeys and um, minimally people that may or may not talk even innocently about that person, which then brings you right back into thinking about them, which doesn't let you break the trauma bonds. Okay, because ideally we become indifferent to the narcissist and we go on with our life regardless of what they're doing. And, you know, we don't, we don't constantly think about them forever. Letting go of idealized thinking that they can change. Thinking that the narcissist can change is an idealized thinking. We know that they, that the possibility of change is slim to none. Real change, change for the positive. Of course, they can change in ways by becoming more covert or learning to hide the behaviors better and things like that. But what I'm talking about is the change we want to see, which is the ones that are positive toward a healthy relationship. Focusing on you instead and the changes you need to make in order to have a higher standard for how you'll be treated in your life and a higher self-value so that you are not um, waiting around for people who have no desire to make any change in their life and most likely cannot. So a lot of people get really, really attached to the good side of the narcissist, the, the love bombing or the neutral, or sure, they have good qualities. Most people have a good quality here and there, right? And they get really attached to that and they hang on to that, hoping that they can just bring more of that out and they can endure the devaluing and the abuse. So, I mean, pretty much what I have written down here is so they have a good side, so what? A lot of people have a good side, most people do. Other people will have a good side too, but you don't need to put up with abuse just to get a little bit of good. And that's where having a higher, a higher standard and, and more value on yourself and more self-worth can, uh, and really living that self-worth can help you not, it can help lower your tolerance for being abused and raise your standards for how you'll be treated. Get rid of the reminders, the photographs, the gifts, anything in your home, redecorate your house, rearrange furniture if you can't do that, anything to change it up and to make it your own again, to um, eliminate the reminders of the narcissistic person. This is a frustrating one because sometimes we have to stop listening to music we like for a while, or it's not saying that we have to do it forever. But right now, while we're trying to break the trauma bonds, sometimes it can help just to, you know, flush it all out and get, just have no reminders around you so that you have, what you're trying to do is regain yourself. 
you lose yourself with trauma bonding. And so you're trying to regain self and it doesn't help to have reminders all around you. Focus on your life. Focus on you. So many times from survivors who are deeply trauma bonded, most of their conversation turns back when it, when it comes to talking about how they're feeling and what's going on with them, turns back to the narcissist and what the narcissist did and, and the abuse and they want to tell stories and that's totally valid and legitimate and we need to do that. We need to hear each other and, and validate and support one another. On our own, we can understand that it, it is useful to take back your life. So start focusing on yourself, your own, find activities, find new things to learn, limit the amount of thoughts and talk you have in your own head about what that narcissist did, limit it, set timers. I will think about this for 10 more minutes and then one hour I'm going to be focused on whatever it is, set a goal, set a task, start bringing your life into the present moment, not back into the past about what that person did and how they are and the fact that they, that you want them to change, but they can't and come into the moment, which is right here, which is all we really have anyway, right? And, and focus on your life and what you want for yourself, what you're doing, um, being present to what you're doing. In order to protect yourself in the future, learning red flags. Learning red flags can help you not only protect yourself in the future, but it can help you to understand what you were dealing with. That, that these are legitimately red flags. It's okay that you didn't see them at least it's not okay that it happened to you, but it's okay in the sense that if you can't know what you didn't know. And so learning about them helps you protect you. And as you're protecting yourself in the future, you're also going back in the past and seeing, okay, this was a problem. This, I'm not crazy. This actually did happen. So you're validating yourself in the situation. A lot of, a lot of people get confused about whether they were actually abused when they know they were, but they can't put it together. They can't believe it. So learning the red flags can help you just see things as they were or are. And number one, ra again, raise your standards so that that's a boundary and you don't let those things get crossed. Also to help you. I'm going to speak quickly about trauma bonding as it relates to what we were just talking about. So trauma bonds are set up from the inconsistent reinforcement, from the intermittent reinforcement, and from the intensity, the complexity, and the inconsistency and promise and then, and then the taking away of that promise. Those are the things that create confusion in someone that then makes someone become addicted to the pattern that's going on of basically love bombing and devaluing, but also the inconsistency in their intermittent reward punishment that comes from a toxic person. It's because of that, what happens is a lot of times people, when they're trauma bonded, will and then they're away from the narcissist. They'll have these, these episodes that where they feel like they know they don't want the person, but they're just aching to reach out to that person. They can't, it's, it's incredibly strong feeling of reaching out because what they're doing, what's going on is their bodies and their brains and their emotions are used to the inconsistent and intermittent reward. That's, that isn't coming when you, when you can't, we have no contact, you're not getting the reward. So replacing that with something healthy for yourself. What is it that you need? Do you need some attention? Go play with an animal, go call a friend, go, you know, whatever it is, go talk to someone, go do something for yourself. Go, um, I don't know, anything that, anything that makes you feel like you're getting what you need in that situation. That's, you know, safe, sane, healthy for yourself. And Sometimes, and there could be different needs for different situations and different people. So it really is about discovering yourself through this and discovering what you need and realizing that you're reaching back toward the poison for the antidote when you are reaching toward the narcissist. And that is, um, that is one reason to have to gain detachment from the narcissist so that you don't have that going on anymore. So that was just a few tips on ways to detach from a narcissistic person. Let me know what you think. And if you have any that you would like, that you would add to this to help other people, add them to the comments section of this video. For more information about this topic, check out the extended link in the description below. And don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll be back with more short videos. You guys take care, goodbye.